no. That, that's uh, proprietary. There's no pen. There's no pen. I really dislike this. You'll just yeah. hit the button and then shake your head. That's pretty cool. That, that's uh, proprietary. Everything has been checked. I'm going to write a strongly worded letter. Piece of garbage. Wait, what now? No, how does it do that? that that's uh, proprietary. Hey, we're paying for this. You're an idiot. Magic. Uh, no. This is why I'm really good at these videos, because I'm an hey. idiot. Oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to learn a whole new thing. All right, guys, welcome back to the Steel Forum. Today, we've got part three of our series with Todd Greening from MDM Solutions. We talk about, in this episode, some of the uh, methodologies for getting that precious data out of SDS2, uh, their, their version of the transmittal tool, uh, getting gather sheets, how it automates the process of finding the right gather sheets for the detail sheets, which I think is a super cool feature. Uh, we talk about some of the challenges as far as it doesn't handle multiple pieces per sheet very well yet. They are working on that. To my knowledge, it's not fixed yet. Uh, they also have a really cool trip, tip in here at the end as far as restraining your lines and your input in SDS2. That's not really an MDM tip, but I'm going to tease it to make you watch the whole thing. So if you've got any questions, as always, hit us down below in those comments, and we'll see you back here on the Steel Forum. I'm sure you'll get to this. Uh, just curious how you make the set that, that goes. Oh, for like a transmittal or something? Yeah, the whole like, you know, oh, okay. all of the drawings with the plans and everything else. Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to finish these off their move. I've checked them. So again, it's verifying 2D and 3D. Oh, I got a merge fail. Do I still have it open somewhere? For our purposes, I'm just going to close it. Now, about, uh, so this member, this sequence here, uh, sequence one is finished. So I want to send it for approval. So that's what you're referring to, approval yeah, to shop? Yeah, I, I, Perfect. I'm ready to go, ready to get that invoice out the door. So now I'm going to run my drawing log, and there's a tab for transmittal. So I'm going to create a transmittal. I'm going to call it there. Uh, Give it, I don't know, here, WA-0098, whatever. Who it's coming from. Now, I do have set up information, contact list. I can put whatever contacts I want in there. So here from here, Todd to Jane Doe and John Smith. I'm going to create. Oh, it's, so, it's very friendly, the, the, the pictures, and the, it's got exclamations, and I like it. <laughs> So I'm going to go under the update. I'm going to say, okay, which items am I sending? So I have filters that I can use, you know, with sequence, uh, whether, uh, I don't know, uh, any certain not, not being approved or approved, whatever. But in my case, I know it's all of these. So I'm going to highlight my detail drawings. I'm going to transfer them over. Now, for whatever reason, let's say I'm sending them for fabrication. Uh, they need to submaterial drawings as well. So which of these go with these details. I don't know. So I'm going to just select auto select sheets. Oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it automatically, you know how many hours that I've spent trying to make that just work. I... So it automatically selected them. Also, it gave me a warning that these have not been detailed. So at this point I can go and detail them. If, uh, if I require them. So I'm just going to minimize that. So of course, I'm going to transfer them over, select them all. If I want to include some erection drawings as well, I can. So I, I'm just going to. Does it tell you which erection drawings are? Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> I would. The reason I say this, oh, is I don't have the most recent one. I, I, I talked to the, uh, the programmer if it was possible. I don't I necessarily yes. think we would ever use that. Okay. But it would have been cool to be like, yeah, yeah. here's this ridiculous button. Because I'll be honest, that information is saved. The reason I mention that, if I, I'm just going to edit this beam, and it's on the detail too, is in the properties. <clears throat> I got to remember where it is. Uh, here. So you see, it is saved. I don't know if you can see that S2. That's a sheet number. Okay. Yeah. So it's on sheet S2 between C and D on line three. Okay. 
So that's written on a mag. So I don't see why it's not, you know, impossible. It should be. I don't think anybody's ever asked for it. But I've selected, I'm going to select all, all my items. I'm going to add them to my transmittal. So I have different transmittals, shop, field, or any hold option. So I'm going to send it to my approval. Transmittal. Oh, yeah. So I have a problem with a sheet size. It's not found. It still added it. It just, I don't know, I probably put it on a weird sheet. So, uh, actually I shouldn't be doing sequence two. So under the finalize. So I come to my finalize. I'm gonna select the, uh, the transmittal. I'm gonna increment my sheets. So in this case, let's see, I'm gonna turn everything on. So sometimes you come to here and it's like, oh, which sheets are they? If this one's easy, I know which ones they are. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the load option. And when I create this transmittal, I've actually created lists. So I'm gonna open up that transmittal, all my detail sheet list. So if I click that, they're selected. Magic, I like it, that's, that's cool. And it's, for whatever reason, also, I have that if I'm going to detail that submaterial that's missing, it created that list of the submaterial that's missing. I can use that. So it's also created uh, a list for erection sheets, gather sheets, all the sheets, all member by piece mark, and then by the format. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So, like, if you're working for a fabricator and you got two different printers and you want just your 11 by 17s, you grab that and poof, you're so. a meatball. There you go. Well, I gotta load it first, but there you go. That's pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna oops, cancel that. I'm going to load, uh, I'll just load the sheets, it's good enough. So I'm gonna increment those sheets. So we are submitted, we are for, oh, if I was. Say nothing's typing. Yeah, sub. I'm just because time proof. Just gonna go sub approval, whatever the name. So now it's going through those sheets and incrementing the sheet revision. Is that using the built-in yes. revisions? Okay. Yes. So I, at this point, I can decide what's going to go with my package. So I can create an Excel sheet. I don't have Excel. I might have a, an example here. So what I wanted to pull out, I forgot the, I, I can't open Excel. But it will it'll create an Excel report of this transmittal, all the details that are on it, the erection view, gather sheets under different tabs, as well as your logo on top and who I'm sending it to. I can also compare the 3D bill of material versus the, sorry, the 3D model versus the 2D bill of material. So, so it that, found that's Kurt's parametric that's using, right? That's no, different. it's a different one. It's one something we wrote ourselves. Okay. So in this case, you know, I have zero in the model. I must have deleted it, and there's one in detail. So there's a there's a problem with this member. So before I send it for fabrication, I'm going to verify what the heck is going on here. Now that's the one that it was telling you something about the funny sheet, right? Yeah. Okay. So there is something wrong with it. Obviously, I'd have to go find, you know, exactly what's wrong with it. That's actually really nice because there, there's a lot of times when we're like hitting that button to get it out and we, we think we fixed everything. And yeah. It, it turns out that, you know, hey, we, we all thought somebody else took care of it. And I didn't mention, but in the other tool, uh, the PDF, I hope it'll open. That little report, if I select, say, a member, I hit that report button, that's exactly what it does. So at any time, if I need to verify something, I don't have to go through that transmittal phase. So I would just select and hit that, no errors found. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here. I can export the PDF of the detail sheets. Ah, so now we've come to a little issue. So I mentioned two fabs. If I was to continue with this, my PDFs with that brown writing would be exported with the brown writing. This so is in 2017, right? This is, yeah, in the, uh, yeah, in 2017. So I would actually have to close this, change my fabricator to the 
one that starts with the underscore GER, so that my PDFs, because my you know, approver doesn't care about the different colors. But for our purposes, I'm just gonna say yes, continue. So it's gonna export all those details. So now, you know, I have the erection sheets, gather sheets. I can also do my CNC if I'm sending for fabrication. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's going through all those sheets, creating PDFs. Maybe I shouldn't have hit that. <laughs> now, does it create a single PDF with all of those drawings in it or does ah. it create one per drawing? Okay, it's, let's go, wait to, so. He's got a little smirk on his face like this <laughs> <kind of laughs> magic that just happened. Yeah. So. He's already beaten me to this punch, hasn't he? Well, there are some <laughs> options, as you can see, uh, say the export PDF. So there isn't, uh, there isn't an option to create one giant PDF because even our MDM, I'll give you a, an example where uh, we have problems. If you put multiple details on sheets. I don't know, you guys, one detail per sheet? We have both. So it doesn't work very well with multiple details on a sheet. Uh, and this has to do with, say, one item on that sheet with multiple details is, you know, it been, uh, needs to be revised. It's actually the sheet that gets the revision. So it causes issues. What kind of issues? Uh, it doesn't work properly. What part of it? That, that's what, which, which, what part of the program uh, doesn't work properly? Because uh, the MDM treats each individual uh, detail as being on a single sheet. Like us, all right, uh, each sheet being having a single detail only. So throughout it, th there's, yes. there's problems throughout. Okay. Exactly. <clears throat> It's something we're looking into because a lot of people said, you know, to all us at the user group, yeah, we like your, your, your uh, module, but we use multiple details per sheet. Yeah, and that's not within our control to change. Exactly. Uh, so I just want to mention there are options when exporting the PDF. I can include the sheet size. I can split the files by sheet size so you'd have individual folders. There is no uh, option to – I'm going to write it down, though. That's a good idea is to have one giant. I don't know what it might affect, but. Uh, so, so what we would want to see is the ability to create one set that has the e-sheets first, member details second, and, and then gather and details can be in a separate file. Yeah. But they should all be in a single file themselves too. Yeah, when, as you can see, I just opened up my transmittal folder. So here's my, for approval. So it's created I'd, all my, Detail sheets based upon the sequence. So I can change that to have it by sheet size and they're all there. So, so yeah. Uh, just to go back because mm -hmm. you threw a little water on my fire. Are there workarounds to deal with the multiple pieces per sheet? Because we used this before and it seemed to work fine. And really? Multiple pieces per sheet. But I'll be honest, I haven't tested with this new version. I haven't tested we in a long time. We just didn't use any of this stuff. Like well, we didn't use any of this. What we did was the model checking portion of it. We never got so far as the 2D check. Oh, okay. And I think that's where we'll run aground is yeah. that you can't have the revision. Because it, yeah, it adds the revision. <clears throat> you know what? I'm going to get back to you on that. I want to know, I'm going to talk to somebody. Uh, to get the exact issue. So issue, straighten it down, issue for multiple details. Yeah, I don't want to say something out of school that, you know, is not true. Right. So right. let me double check on that. So, uh, yeah. So next it'd be CNC. What CNC I want to export. So under my setup. Very much like the transmittal tool. Yeah, similar. That, Oh my, maybe I shouldn't say that too. They put it there because we had one. <laughs> so under my transmittal, so if I create my CNC, of course, again, it's gonna give me warnings and valid type of material because I selected more than one. But here's my, you know, CNC, it's done. And of course it's basing the selection here, of course, the setup, it's taken from SDS2. There is no interior setup to modify what you see on the main, uh, main, uh, main menu. So, sure. that, you know, it's just using 
the option of which CNC. Uh, I can do a KISS file, Fab Suite, Strumis, uh, Shop Bolt, Field Bolt Report. Again, I don't have Excel. Uh, I can create a finish list. I can zip up the project. And if the approver is using SDS2's approval uh, uh, module. package module, okay. I can uh, zip it up directly for that package. Now, I can do those, as I mentioned, one by one, or I can just check those items that I want and hit go, and it'll do one, you know, in one shot. The only problem with this is you might think it's frozen. It's not frozen. It's just going through. What is alert? I believe the alert is to verify 2D, 3D. Well, so there's a problem again here with that. Yeah, that one we're aware. Okay, yeah. yeah. So... so you, you mentioned something that, that kind of rang a bell in my head. The, the finish list, how do, how do the finishes work? Okay. So uh, just let me write finish down because <clears throat> I want to finish this transmittal. Okay. So oh, no, I'm just going to cancel that, minimize. So I'm going fin to finalize the transmittal. Okay. So finish it. So let's grab a... Oh, I love these. I was probably from that 2001. So I'm going to go into my finishing. So you can add finish as you see fit. So I use a system. It doesn't really, you know, any categories that I want, an extra, you know, maybe, uh, 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 you know, any information that I want you know, et cetera. Yep. So now that paint or the finishing could be saved as a, a separate, you know, for, uh, for use later on. Yeah. So in, I'm just going to cancel this so I can change so the can create one setup per fabricator. Basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in my case, I, I use this, this, uh, this system. So, you know, just gives more information on that finish report, it will give me, you know, the, the system as well as any other information that's uh, within the, the window itself. Okay. Now, one that other- That goes on the drawing how? Ah. In my case, let me open up a detail. I should open the sheet, but. Now, at this point, that is up to the user because everybody does it slightly different. So in my case, I don't care. I used a table. You use uh, tables yet in the drawing? I'm trying to learn. Okay, so I use the table. So what this is actually is a report that's actually reading the finish on the member through its properties and just custom writing it properties. yeah, through its custom properties or writing it here. The same thing with the steel grade. So other things. Yeah. Th this will be another thing that would be a requirement of doing one detail per sheet. Yeah. But having said that, that's what I've done. <clears throat> Whether the user wants to have it on the sheet, that's up to them. Yeah. Cause you could use a table that just lists all the finishes for the members on the sheet. <laughs> Or you can actually tell it through the, uh, where the hell is it? Custom properties through member. So I don't know where finish is on the list, but here, finish type. If I edit, I can tell it, add it to the member detail. Right, right. Then we actually did that for a while. That was, we still so we, do. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, similar to what we do for hold now. When we add a hold to a member, uh, yeah, uh, not a, yeah, hold. Remember before it used the status? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, not hold, the paint. Oh, sorry, I'm, yes, lose, paint, I'm losing paint was my also, mind. Paint was done through the hold notes. Right, we don't do that anymore. So if you want the paint on the detail or where that information is going to go, that's up to you. You want it on the detail through the table, that's fine. You want it using custom property, that's fine. That's up to you now. So I've seen actually, this is 
for the, the people who happen to be watching it, if, if you had tested this before and it felt like there was some stuff missing or that it was kind of working, trying to trick this, it, it feels much more like it's integrated and it's, yeah. it's not, it, it's not forced to try and, you know, hack something that works. This feels much right. more like intended functionality. Right. It, yeah. it feels more like it's, uh, like you say, intended. It's not a workaround. Right. No, not at all. Stock. This feels like the way the software should work. And also, like there were reasons why we uh, why we were using categories and routings and the status. It's because it was a lot faster before than the properties. Properties have improved yeah. almost exponentially as far as the speeding the speed of it. So that's why we completely backed up because I think you guys use a routing for your kiss files. You want the paint in there. Was no, we guys? don't use we don't use routing at all. Oh, okay. The, I, so, I think actually it, this seems like it came maybe from our conversation because we had to decide to step back from it because it used status and routing and all that stuff that a drafting station couldn't touch. Oh, okay. So that yeah, was we, where we ran into issues was the person checking it couldn't say this is bad. You know, couldn't put a hold note on things or whatever. Okay. And, and that was that was our sticking point. So, but we, we stuck with it just because of, you know, the fine tool is yeah, fantastic. I haven't, even, I haven't even touched that, the fine tool now. Well, we should do, like, let's do that in a whole you know, separate, let's do that okay. a whole okay. separate video because that's, Perfect. that's its yeah. own deal. There's yeah. a lot of magic there. <laughs> uh, I hope you use the other one as well. Oh, I use them both. Okay. They're, they're, those uh, are the two I keep on my toolbar because we, you know, we had to go back to using our own with all member custom properties, which now, I'm hoping at this point you've uh, you brought Nick around a bit and we can reinvestigate this. Okay. So next uh, I sent out for approval. I'm going to use the same tool for my return from approval. So again, I go same tool, drawing log. I'm going to open the approval return tab. I can select which approval. So I'm going to use the one I just created. So I have two choices now. If, uh, my approver is using SDS2 approval tool. They would just send me back a small little XML file and I would use the status transfer or I can do it manually. So what I'm going to do is let's say I'm going to approve everything except for, I'm just going to write it down 005. So I'm going to do a revision because I think uh, when you were speaking to, uh, to Bruce, you mentioned that how we handle revisions. So, and I'm just writing these numbers down so I don't approve the wrong one. So I'm gonna go through everything except for uh, five, eight, and seven. So I'm going to approve all of these. So 05, was it 05, the middle one? No, 08. So I'm gonna approve, revise, and resubmit. So. So they've gone into it. Now, of course, what is, is there something, something is driving me crazy. Why is it showing, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get to the toolbar in the bottom. Click that little down arrow. Or is that, is it just run off? Yeah. The uh, where is it? Uh, Cascade window. No, it's where is it? Ah, hold on. I hate Windows 10. They change everything. Well, I don't hate it. I actually like Windows 10. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say that's how I felt about MDM. Everything's in someplace else. Okay, so what I want to show is just changing the uh, the status. So I'm going to go to my <laughs> approval review status. So this one I just created myself. So I know by color coding what's uh, you know, <laughs> approved, what's not approved. So I, I have a, a revision here, so I have to fix something. So I'm gonna put it back to the, now it's fine, I don't know. Back to the, so I'm gonna open the second floor. It's a little easier with that way. So I have a little change. Let's say this beam has to be moved over for a revision. So I'm gonna create a revision. So I'm going to use the tool that you're probably familiar with is the attachment tool. 
So it's similar to the one that we created here that we gave away for free. So I'm going to create an addendum, a change order, or a revision. So here, uh, here I'll call it, uh, I don't know, REV. Stupid zero architect. Zero. Call it stupid architect. <laughs> <laughs> so revision 001. So I've created it. Now I'm going to attach it to some members. So I'm just going to get this down. So I selected the members. I'm going to attach it. So, so once I've done that, it's going to ask me to archive those details. Because of course I'm going to make a change and the drawing's going to change. So I'm going to click OK. So I'm going to go back to that uh, drawing control tool, that PDF icon. And when I open it up, those members that have been in the final check that are now under that revision will highlight in pink. The reason it's pink, I don't oh, know. Okay. Look at that. It all okay. Creates. My wife oh. will love it. <laughs> <laughs> also, I haven't mentioned, but as I created that revision, I'm going to select the open. I'm going to go to that management module. We have a revision uh, uh, folder. And it created a status display for this revision by itself. So, I'm so it's basically it. telling you what members were revised with that revision. Yeah. So if I, there's a status display it created. So if I open it, it'll turn everything else in pink and the ones in the revision will be a different color. So, so I, I thought the attachment tool actually attached thing like a. Yeah, it did. You're a, it did. I haven't gotten to it yet. Oh, yeah. there's not a phys there's a physical attachment of a revision. In this case, it's not a, it's not a, 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 a file sketch or a file. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is of course uh, I have to archive these drawings. So what I can do is I can go under my filter here and just select revision one. I'm going to select them and I'm going to archive them. So where am I going to archive them? Well, I can archive them internally through my transmittal that I created, uh, the return from transmittal rather, or the revision. So I'm gonna put them under that revision. So now it's going through them. <laughs> so oh, once it's done, so I'm gonna return to those members. I'm gonna select them. And we're gonna go under the revision tab. So now depending on the, what's being done to the member. So I'm going to add in the reason. So in this case, uh, what's that? 08. I'm going to select 08, highlight the revision. And in this case, the member is relocated. If there was a, uh, you know, depending on other work, I can add in other, I can put in change. So I move beam over, I don't know, 12 inches to the east as per whatever revision, you know, whatever document I can append. So that note is now added. So these other two, the changes that are going to be done is, uh, material is going to be modified because I'm going to change the whole uh, placement. So uh, holes move there. Here, just holes. Moved. So I'm going to add it to those. Now at this point, I have to back up or because right now those members were finished. So what I mean by that is through the, you know, the, uh, the checking in the model, they've been done. So I have to back them up. What I mean by that is I have to turn them back to the point uh, where the change does not affect the member. So in the case of here, I'll give you an example. This member here, it's just going to move over. It's, I'm not going to affect very much of it. I don't think the connection will change. So I really don't have to back it up that much. So I can decide whether to, you know, unsign it for the detail check, detail, et cetera. But this one should be fine. It's just a question that it's being moved. It's not going to change. The other two, however, I'm going to need to uh, unsign them all the way to the point where the material has not been checked. Do you, you understand? I, I see glazed faces. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm 
I understand this part. I, this is where all of okay. my fears come to fruition. Okay. So I'm going to unsign them all the way to the connection. So on these two members. So connection. So now it's removing that signature. The reason why is because I'm going to make changes and they have to be redetailed. They have to be rechecked. Now is the other stuff. This doesn't have to be rechecked because it's not affected by my change or my okay. revision. So uh, I'm just remembering if I forgot something. Oh, okay. So uh, I am forgetting something. I've skipped this step. Let me just double check here. I don't think I backup affected members. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to turn back the other. Actually, I should just use the load. The other management module one. So, you know, where I am. So, uh, I'm going to actually attach a specific. Uh, Now, let me use uh, select, uh, where is it set to cert? I am going to actually uh, attach the revision to any affected material using either this update system. So I'm going to just do with this member. I'm just going to you know, I, revise. I, I think I'm still a little confused on what attach revision means. What, this, right what are you attaching? Okay, are you just so, basically assigning a revision? Is that like another way of saying it? Yeah. There's no, so, like, it's not like a PDF attachment no. of the revised drawings. No. So if I go under the properties, we have a revision tab. So you can see the revision information is there. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to do. So that's what now, I mean just, by. Just to clarify, since I'm looking at this, this means you can only put five revisions on a member. Yes. Yes. Okay. Do you get more? <laughs> Some days are better than others. Really? Well, if that's a request, I don't think it would be that difficult to put it in. If, if we get one that's that's that high, the the change order will be. Yeah, you got to stop somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I want to show that uh, I can attach the revision to the member and material. So I've selected that main material of that beam, and I can revise it and attach it. You know. So now there's an attached revision to the material itself. Okay, uh, so bah, 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 bah. Ah, before I change anything, I have to remember that I've used model complete. So this one we haven't, I haven't put one directly into uh, MDM because any changes I make, I have to, you know, of course, remove the model complete. So I'm going to. So unsigning back to where you were does not undo the model no. complete. No. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna, here, let's just say move it. Uh, I don't know, that's, what did I say, 12? 12, 12 inches. At zero, does that work? Yes. Whoa, no. wait. What? Go <laughs> at zero, what you is didn't? that nonsense? Yo, so I'm gonna use move member or whatever, uh, move stretch member, I selected the whole member, reference point on my, number pad 12 or I can go one dash here one dash zero the add symbol and then whatever degree so an angle starting with a zero is to the right it is on the x yeah so what here this, what, this 2015 maybe watch I'm going to add a member so let's say here here and I want a 12 foot zero at 45 degrees hit enter matt am, am i the only one who didn't know about this that's, that's news to me i knew about doing that for like spacing so you could do say two at three comma or i mean maybe it's a space but you know four at something space four space five you could do that for spaces and holes i had no idea about doing that for a move works it works in 2d as well the only thing you're telling me this has been in here since 2015 something like that but there is something in your interface i believe 
has to be checked or unchecked. Where is it? Allow. Here. Disable typed. Make sure it's uh, not checked. Oh, well, sure. But I knew you could type. See, this is why we created this channel. It's this type of crazy stuff that we know all of these things. We've been doing this channel how long now, Matt? Like two months? Yeah, two, three months. Two, three months. The amount of things that I've learned exist inside the software that I never knew, right? Yeah, and right. Never would have thought to ask. I, I knew you could type it, but that angle thing, that just threw me entirely. Right. Uh, and if I didn't, I don't know if I mentioned it, it works in 2D as well. In like the drawing editor? Yeah, same thing. Here, I'll just open the air. This I'm very angry right now. There's got to be a German word for anger at all the time you've wasted, but hope for the future. There's <laughs> right. got to be like some German phrase that means uh, exactly that. We, I don't know. Our language of English is terrible, but German always seems to have a ridiculous... German and Japanese, I don't know why, but the, those languages... Very expressive all, languages. Yeah. This makes me very angry and very happy at the same time. All right, guys, that's it for part three. We'll have part four for you as soon as possible. If uh, you're watching this before the holiday, I hope you have a great 4th of July, and as always, come back and see us here on the Steel Forum. <laughs>